Welcome, friends. We're so excited that all of you have taken time out of your busy schedules to join us. Um, my name is Kimberly, and you are in for an amazing enrichment call. Uh, Dr. Greg Fritz is going to be facilitating our call today, and he's going to be talking about the five aspects of increasing influence as leaders. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So you want to make sure that you have something close by if you want to jot down some notes or just write some things that you don't forget. Be sure that you grab something handy. Anto, would you mind opening us up in, a, in prayer today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new year. It's new year only when we ask you to renew our souls, renew our spirits, renew our hearts to be in alignment with your heart. So, so we seek your kingdom first and righteousness. Lord, uh, we ask that you will guide uh, our brother uh, Greg today as he will uh, teach us uh, to be more faithful and influential leaders in our ministries. Uh, empower us by your Holy Spirit, uh, guide us and teach us uh, so we can grow in Christ likeness. In Jesus name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Anto. Well, we are in for a real treat today. You are going to be exponentially blessed, I promise, because you are going to hear from Dr. Greg Fritz. Let me tell you a little bit about him if you're um, unfamiliar with Greg in any way. Greg was born and raised in a rural farming community in Pennsylvania. That's on the eastern side of the United States. He started his mission career by serving Christ among the poor in Honduras as a 16-year-old uh, young man. He helped found a Caleb Project while he was studying at Penn State University. He was president of Caleb Project from 1983 to 2006. From 2007 to 2011, Greg served as Vice President at Partners International. He also has served as an adjunct per, um, professor of cross-cultural ministry and world religions at Whitworth University and New Testament survey at Moody Bible Institute in Spokane, Washington. <clears throat> He completed his doctorate of ministry degree from Fuller Seminary in 2004. He and his lovely wife, Nancy, who many of us know, have four adult children and 10 grandchildren. What a blessing. Currently, Greg freelances as a coach for business and missions leaders. Um, it's going to be awesome to have Greg come. Just before he does come, let me remind you, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, be sure to put them in the chat, and we'll have time at the very end of our call today to answer any of those questions that you might have. So, Greg, please come and share with us now. Thank you, Kimberly. What an honor it is to be joining with you all, all over the world. I wanted to give you a little bit of a picture of uh, what's outside my window this morning. Mm. You can see what happened last night and um, actually is still happening out my window. We have snow here in rural Pennsylvania where I am. Today, I want to talk to you about leadership and particularly from the um, direction of leadership being influence. And I'd like to start off by just reminding you that, that anybody can be a leader. A leader is anyone who influences others. And all of you are leaders. All of you have influence. All of you have people who look to you and um, receive from you um, input and direction and wisdom. Um, and that is influence. You are influencing those people and you are being influenced by others. There are people who you look to as leaders who you allow to influence you. The world tells us that the more influence we have, the greater we are as a leader. Um, through gaining power or money, there are different ways that we gain influence in the world. In fact, I'd like to have a 
time where you can offer ideas of how the world gains, how leaders in the world gain more influence. What are some ways that we think of as influential leaders in our world? If you could just chat, put those um, suggestions, your ideas in the chat, that would be helpful for all of us. What are some ways leaders in the world gain more influence? Fame, yes. Through competition, gaining power, publicity, solving problems, money, control. These are great answers. These are things that we think of from a worldly perspective, offering solutions. Yep, we gain influence by empowering others, by gaining followers from others, being well-liked, absolutely. Sometimes from manipulation, we think of that maybe as, as a negative way. So in the world, we think of gaining influence as sometimes very positive means and sometimes negative means. Sometimes people gain influence through um, methods that are not necessarily the kinds of things that we would want to be identified with us. Um, you know, people can be, can tell lies, they can misrepresent themselves, they can maybe cheat, they can um, use bribes. Yeah, there someone said bribing. Yeah, they, there are ways that you can gain influence in the world that are not necessarily things that we think of as positive examples of gaining influence, particularly in Christ's kingdom. In Christ's kingdom, it's also true that leadership is influence. Um, we, we see that this is true. However, in Christ's kingdom, influence is a more narrow road. People gain influence in Christ's kingdom, not by external factors as much as from internal factors only. In the world, we see people gaining influence both by external factors and internal factors, but also in all we look at and all we see are the external things. Um, how popular someone is, if they're a celebrity, um, if they've won an election. Um, these are the ways that people gain influence in the world, but in, in Christ's kingdom, they're more internal realities that enable us to gain influence. Our character, the way that we live our lives, the decisions that we make, whether or not we are a servant. And here we can see Matthew 23, 11, the greatest among you will be your servant. In the world, the greatest among us is the one who is served oftentimes. But in Christ's kingdom, the greatest is the one who is the servant. And we become, we recognize a servant based on our character, our internal realities. Let me ask you another question that you can respond in the chat. What are leaders in Christ's kingdom, what do they do to gain influence? Serve, yes. Obey God, yes. Sacrifice, disciple others, live right, preach, make disciples, counsel, live right, serve others. Yeah, a lot of serving. Be authentic. Very good. Humility. Teach and train others. Work, labor, be vulnerable. Patience. Being teachable. Yeah, teaching the word. You can see these are, these are different words than we thought of when I asked you, what kind of characteristics and what do, what do leaders in the world do to gain influence? These are different things when we think of in Christ's kingdom. And really the point that I'd like to make is in Christ's kingdom, leadership influence is a narrow path. It's more defined than it is in the world. In the world, it's a wide path. There are many ways that people gain influence. Some of them are positive and, and helpful. Some of them are negative and hurtful. In Christ's kingdom, it's always positive. It's always helpful. And oftentimes we think of it as more an internal reality. 
and it's the ones who serve are the ones that we give the greatest influence. Today, I'd like to offer five principles that a leader in Christ's kingdom can use to increase their influence. And the first is spiritual authority. Spirit, and to, to think about spiritual authority, I'd like for us to turn in scripture to Titus. Titus chapter 1 and 2. Consider this, Paul, a servant of God. Right there, we see Paul is reflecting his influence by calling himself a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. He is an apostle. He is a leader. He is someone who is influencing others, but he starts off as a servant. And his purpose to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of truth that leads to godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and which now at his appointed season he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. And he's writing this to Titus, who he is encouraging as a leader, as a younger leader who he is influencing. So Paul is leading Titus. Titus is a leader that Paul is trying to encourage and help him come along. To Titus, my true son, in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. The reason I left you in Creed is that you might put in order. So this is what he is instructing uh, Titus. Paul is instructing Titus to do is to um, put in order the things that ne needed to be left undone. So Paul is encouraging Titus to be a leader, to influence the elders in the church so that they will be more effective as leaders. So we have this leaders, leading leaders, leading leaders, influencing people of influencing, influencing others, influencing others. And it's interesting how Paul encourages Titus in leading the leaders in chapter two, beginning in verse one. You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. And I'm not going to go through this whole chapter, but it's a very useful exercise to look at what Paul encouraged is, is encouraging Titus to, care, to teach and to influence the leaders in the church. It's all things having to do with their character. It's things that will increase their influence based on internal realities, not external realities. So he talks to them, to the older men, to the older women, um, down to the um, younger women, encouraging the young men to be self-controlled. And the one that I'm particularly interested in is in verse 9, where it says, Paul is encouraging Titus to encourage the leaders to teach the slaves to be subject to their masters. Even the slaves should be leaders. Even the slaves should be influencing others. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted. Why? So that in every way, they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. Even the slaves, the people who are the least, you would think, influential in, in the world, are being encouraged to live out their lives with godly character so that they will be more influential in that one life. I love that. They, they can be a, an influence on their master as they live according to God's principles. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, the way the world increases influence, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. These, then, are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. With all authority, do not let anyone despise you. So the first thing that I would like you to think about is that leadership and um, influence in Christ's kingdom 
is authority that arises out of godly character. A leader's influence results from others' perception that he or she walks with God. People know when you are in genuine relationship with God and when you are faking it. When people see that you are seeking God first, they trust you and delight to be influenced by you. Often people will measure your relationship with God with how you treat them. People see that if you are seeking God first, that you are being influenced, they will trust you. They will know that you are godly. And if you treat people with honor, they will believe and trust that you are also honoring God. If you honor people, people will assume you honor God. And this comes out of a humility, out of a service, out of a godly character that is there for the purpose of, in, in God's kingdom, of increasing influence. The next idea that I would like to share with you regarding increasing influence, increasing our ability to represent Christ in our world, is the idea of spiritual maturity. Growth takes time and consistency. Maturity can't be rushed. It takes a lifetime to become mature in Christ. And, and we need to recognize as people are looking to us and allowing us to influence them, they see us mature. And, and as they watch us mature, over time, they allow us to give more influence in their life. Spiritually mature people don't take themselves too seriously. They are quietly confident. They trust in God. We can um, see this in um, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And you can see that this is an example of how we grow and how we become mature in Christ and how that results in us gaining influence and ability to lead in a greater way in Christ's kingdom. So we have this idea first of spiritual authority where we, out of godly character, are given more influence in people's lives and we become greater in our leadership in the kingdom. And that this takes time and it and the maturity comes over time. It doesn't happen quickly. It happens as we carefully live our lives out according to God's principles, moving along life's path. And so we become mature. The way that we become mature is by practicing spiritual disciplines over time. A relationship of cooperation with Christ comes from a lifestyle of deliberately seeking him. And that's what our spiritual disciplines are. It's deliberately putting ourselves in positions where we are becoming more like Christ. Spiritual disciplines leads to godly character. Godly character leads to increased influence. So as we are um, growing in our influence, growing in our leadership, um, becoming more um, influential in Christ's kingdom, we practice spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines train us to be godly. Spiritual disciplines lead to godly character. Godly character leads to increased influence. This all flows together to enable us to be greater leaders in Christ's kingdom, which is, again, somewhat different and upside down from the way that we think of leadership and influence in the world. It all arises internally as people see us and recognize that we are following Christ and becoming more godly in our character. 
the number there are a number of spiritual disciplines that can contribute to our spiritual growth um, each of us need to find a routine of spiritual disciplines that that are appropriate to us of course um common for probably all of us our daily bible study and prayer um these are you know recognized as as essential regular fellowship with other believers is another way that um another spiritual discipline that's appropriate for for every believer um and then there are others that are periodic you know maybe periodic fasting times or times of silence pulling away i mean i'm i'm not this isn't an exclusive list of spiritual disciplines but just to remind you that these practices that we engage in as believers are for the purpose of developing our character making us more godly drawing us into the presence of christ and the result of that is people see that and allow us more influence in their lives and we become greater leaders we become people who are more um, effective in accomplishing the agenda that God has for us in his kingdom. Another idea, another um, principle in thinking about all of this is the what I call the little big principle. This is the idea that we must be faithful in the little things before we are entrusted with bigger responsibilities. We see this um, in, in uh, very clearly as a principle of, of Jesus in Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. This, we, this is so true, it becomes intuitive for us. We recognize that if someone is cheating in a little area, we don't want to... Um, trust them with something big because if they're cheating in a little area probably they're going to cheat in a big area and that gives us a lack of confidence in their integrity it gives us a, a pause when we are allowing them to have influence in our lives and the same is true with us in relationship with others if, if people see that we can't be trusted on the little things they aren't going to um, allow us to influence them in things that really make a difference. We're, they're not going to give us an opportunity to speak into their lives. They're not going to give us that chance to have an influence in their the direction that their life is taking or the things that they're thinking or the things that they're considering. So we want to be uh, alert and aware as we're thinking about leadership, as we're thinking about becoming greater leaders in Christ's kingdom, that we are faithful in the small things. You know, the question that we can ask ourselves is, are we bothered when we have a small assignment? Did we feel like we had more important things to do? If, if we are asked to clean up at church and we feel like, oh, that's not that important, I don't want to do that. That might be a small assignment. We need to be careful with that because if we don't um, step into those small assignments or faithful with those little things, that's an indicator to other people that we maybe cannot be trusted with the bigger things. We need to be careful. Small assignments can be tests. God and people are watching to see how well we handle humble assignments. And if we are faithful in those small assignments, we will be entrusted with greater assignments. So it's that, it's that humble response to small assignments that open the door for us to have greater influence in other people's lives. The final thing that I'd like to remind you of as we think about influence and as we think about leadership is that we need to be people who are giving God glory in all things. When we succeed as leaders, are we puffed up ourselves? Are we 
accept, accepting the accolades for ourselves, or are we genuinely recognizing this is all from God and God deserves all the glory, whatever it is that my greatness would be, um, which is a, which is what we are called to do, uh, whether in word or deed, we do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is this is the humble place. And as people watch us, they're watching. Are we in it for ourselves, whatever it is that we're doing, or are we in it for God's glory? Are we in it to give him the credit? for everything that's happening that's um that's good and positive and and building his kingdom. So to go back and review leadership as we think about leadership we think about um influence it's influence that God gives us in building his kingdom. He gives us that opportunity to have uh to make a difference in other people's lives and other people look to us and give us that opportunity to influence them when they see that we have spiritual authority when we are um, recognized as having character that is godly and um, when we speak people give us that opportunity to influence in their lives and they can see our spiritual maturity. They recognize that over time we are growing, we are becoming more like Jesus, and that gives them increased confidence to allow us to influence them. We grow in maturity by practicing the spiritual disciplines. We, we engage in those regular exercises that, that increase our um, humility and grow our character enabling us to um, to be godly and people see that and again allow us to have greater influence in their lives we see faithfulness in the little things allow us to have greater opportunities for ministry we have greater opportunities to influence others and all of this is done under the understanding that god gets the glory God is the one who deserves all glory, and all glory goes to God. Thank you very much. Oh, amen. I told you guys, it was going to be an amazing time today. And praise God, it was absolutely anointed from the Lord. So thank you so much, Greg. As we've heard so much today, maybe there's been some questions that you've been thinking, and we want to make sure that we take time to answer any questions that you might have. Questions or input. Um, or input. You know, I'm, I'm sure some of you have, this is ringing true for you, and you're thinking, yes, and I even have, you know, maybe you have a specific example or something to reinforce these truths feel free to 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 chime in and and um i'd like for us to have an interaction about this to take it to a, a deeper so that it's um internalized at a deeper level for all of us and i'm looking forward to learning from you to see what you have to say as well yeah good morning good evening to all of you i'm so much excited and i'm excited by something that might be a bit unique than what everybody's seeing, and one of the things that really excited me is the logo to our lesson today. You know, those shadows and those athletes on the track field. It's so amazing to see that their shadows are taller than them. And that brings this picture to me that the influence becomes bigger than us and that at the end of the day, God is glorified. I looked at that logo and it just spoke to me as you lead others and as you influence others your influence becomes bigger than you and god takes the glory Amen. and that should be the art when you raise others to become better than you and to become more than jesus oh. so everything on that, on that logo on the track is just just amazing you know, from one leader, it looks like from smallness to the greatness of God, but the image of the athletes is smaller 
and the reflection which talks to me about the influence that comes out of our uh, our our leadership. So I'm so much excited and thank you very much, Dr. Greg, for the great insights and the principles. And yeah. I'm equally excited because I have my co-leaders here from Africa and from Kenya. And I think we have picked something for us. Thank you very much. God bless. Praise God. Wow, just even in the logo the Lord is using. That's that is anointed right there. Let's hear from Anto. I see your hand up, brother. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Greg, for today's session. Uh, my question is regarding to the fourth principle, the little big. It's a comment and a question. It's a comment. Uh, it is shocking sometimes uh, to see leaders who are we've been in ministry uh, for years, and when you ask them for small responsibilities, it's kind of shocking to them that okay, it's out of my domain or it's out of my expertise. I am uh, kind of called to higher or to more important tasks, you know? So I like the way that you put it, that it shows its indicator for something deeper. So uh, could you please help or or give some, some uh, applications uh, how we can, uh, on personal level, to ourselves, and also if we want to help others, what are some steps that uh, help us to be sure of our motives or our uh, our uh, biblical understanding of the uh, ser uh, servant to become servants like Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Anto. I, I'd like to turn the question a little bit <clears throat> and to help you see it, to help you look at it from, from a different perspective. And that is, as we're thinking about leadership and thinking of it as leadership being influence, to put yourself, when you're in that situation where you're wondering about, is this task, is this request, is this assignment too humble for me? Is it too low? Is it too small? To think about it and ask yourself the question, how will young people who are watching me respond to the way I respond to this situation? So, for example, the, with the example that you gave, Anto, that um, when you see someone feeling that's a big leader feeling like a responsibility is too small, as a younger leader watching and, and uh, um, seeing what's going on there, how does that make you feel? How does, how does that make you alert to the influence that that big leader has on your life? And the way that you ask the question gives me the indication that you actually took away some of that big leader's ability to influence you because that big leader wasn't willing to do the small task. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens for you. If you are the big leader and you ask yourself, just as a little exercise, how will other leaders, how will other, how will followers um, view me if I am unwilling to take and be faithful in this small task. That can be a clue as to how you should respond to the quest to that assignment. And you will probably change your mind. <laughs> Instead of saying, this is too small for me, I don't have time to do this little thing. You may say, it's really important that I do this little thing because that is going to have an make an impression on others who I want to influence, and they will see that I'm a I'm faithful in the little things, and that will give them confidence that I will also be faithful in the big things. Does that make sense? Am, am I make I'm kind of going around the barn to answer your question. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's very clear. Thanks. So Anita has her hand up. So Anita, could you share your question? <laughs> Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Greg, for this uh, for this talk. It has really inspired me. I think uh, also I'm not asking a question, but uh, I'm I'm just appreciating from from the lesson that we have learned, which I think would be a good thing for leadership kind of training or workshops other than the children's leaders only because we are finding this problem in ministry where 
everyone thinks ministering is standing on the pulpit and preaching. And you forget to know, to know or think that even these little things would look at little is actually it may even be a greater ministry than someone who stands at the pulpit. Things like maybe cleaning the, the chairs in the church, cleaning the floor. People look at it as belittling them with their education, with their clothing, they are looking smart. But I think right now, me being a pastor, I began from somewhere down there where I, I was doing the little things. Little did I know I was called to be a pastor. And maybe God was training me in that way to show me how I should be a servant. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a very good lesson. Thank you for it. Thank yes. you, Anita. That's why I love that, that part in Titus where Paul instructs even the slaves to be careful how they are living their lives because they are people of influence. Ruth from Kenya has a question. It says, uh, leaders can influence people. Does God use such models to teach us for his glory? That's Ruth from Kenya. Thank you for that question, Ruth. Yes, God uses all things for his glory. God deserves glory in all things. So as we influence others, it is to his glory that, that we are doing that. And of course, we need to, this is assuming that we are walking with Christ and the influence is according to his purpose. There'd be another point that we could bring in that we live our lives according to Christ's purpose, and then we became we become more influential, we become greater leaders in his kingdom, and that brings more glory to him. Amen. Well, we see that there's actually another question. Kenya's been pretty active in our chat here. So Arthur from Kenya said, as a leader, how can you resist pride or being proud? That's a great question, and it probably is individual. Maybe we should throw that back out to the chat and ask, how do other leaders engage in becoming that greater leader that Christ is enabling them to become and not be prideful, not take on that responsibility, that acknowledgement, the accolade on themselves, but rather turn it back to God? Let me, let's see if we can get some answers in the chat that, that um, answer that question. Uh, like Paul, celebrate our weakness, admit uh, when we are wrong, accept your mistake, and accept su uh, suggestions, be teachable. These are all great answers. Yes. And then finally, we do had we, we did have one more hand up. I want to check in. Raymond, did you have a question? I uh, yes, no, it hasn't been answered yet. I wanted to know whether there were whether you could talk of something like negative influence what do you mean by negative influence i i just wanted to know whether there are kinds of influences or this just one kind of influence because uh when we when you talked of how people gained influence at the beginning somebody talked of manipulation mm. well manipulation is quite negative and i'm wondering if anybody gained influence through manipulation would that still be influence good influence so when you're saying negative influence you're saying that we can behave in ways that would decrease our influence that would would actually make us smaller leaders in Christ's kingdom i think it would if that's the case it would be the opposite it would be doing things that people see are not it would be lying or cheating or except you know uh, maybe accepting bribes in situations that is totally irresponsible or using wrong force, power to gain influence over others. Is that what you're thinking that that would be negative influence? Oh, yes. I think I'm talking of the kind of influence that would maybe that would maybe accepted by the world, but not by Christ. Yes. Yes. I think that's where we draw, why we can draw a distinctive between the way that we often think about leadership and influence in the world and how we think about leadership and influence within Christ's kingdom. It's very different. In the world, oftentimes the influence comes from external, the things we observe externally. And in Christ's kingdom, it often comes from things we observe internally. 
So it, in Christ's kingdom, influence rises out of our character. In the world, influence rises out of our popularity or our power or the amount of money that we control. Or um, there's there are many ways in the world, but um, often we think of influence and leadership as being something that's external. And, and in Christ's kingdom, it, it tends to be very different. It's coming from, from internal realities that we would call character, humility, honesty, servanthood. We would call that legitimate influence. In the, in the world, there's Ill, we could say the opposite of illegitimate influence that comes just because of something, you know, in, in America, I don't know if this is true so much in other parts of the world, but we have celebrities celebrities that have no knowledge or understanding or wisdom in a particular area, but they will talk about that particular area and become very influential be just because they're popular and they shouldn't be influential in that area because they don't know anything about it. And, um, and that would be illegitimate influence and, and is not the kind of leadership that we would want in Christ's kingdom. We would want legitimate influence or godly leadership. Does that make sense? Thank you very much, Doctor. I'm so edified. Mm -hmm. God Praise bless. God. Well, we hope we've answered most, if not all, of your questions. This has been an amazing call today. Thank you again, uh, Greg. It's been wonderful to have your insights on this amazing topic. We've got some more amazing things coming up in 2024 as we uh, look to our other enrichment calls. We have a writer's workshop coming up, and this is something that if uh, you have been interested in the topic of writing curriculum, this is for you. It's going to be an intensive. It's going to be 10 weeks. Um, you have to have seen Karen Helmuth, who presented on this topic in November, on November 14th. Um, and I believe there's gonna be a link in the chat. Um, you have to watch that one first. And then be sure that you register, get yourself signed up, to be a part of it and of course bring a friend along too we'd love to have more people equipped in writing curriculum it is a full commitment there's going to be homework and at the end of it you're going to be producing curriculum yourself so be sure that you get yourself uh, registered um, it's going to be an exciting time intensive homework but it's going to produce so much fruit so be sure that you get yourself signed up for the writers workshop if you're interested um, our next enrichment call is going to be with our dear brother, Jonathan Stone. He's going to be talking to us on Tuesday, February 27th, about branding. Um, branding is so important because it is absolutely essential to limit confusion. It communicates integrity gains trust and secures loyalty. Imagine the impact among our global children's leader leaders if our messaging was clear and consistent. You want to make sure that you join us for Branding for Gospel Impact to not only learn principles for communicating your vision to the next generation, but also gain practical skills in visual design. Jonathan is going to help us gain confidence in our skills together. We're going to be creating an attractive flyer um, to invite others to our next event. Are you guys excited about that? I know I sure am too. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And then please don't forget that we have our enrichment calls every six weeks. So put it down on your calendar. Uh, make sure that you don't miss any of them. They are always so encouraging. They are always so informative, insightful, and equipping. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. God bless you, and we will see you next time we have our enrichment call.